been securely fastened into place with our four screws. And you'll notice that all the charms are removed uh, from the carriers. We don't need the charms in place, and in fact, these will be shipped from the factory without the charms. So as we start to migrate our wiring down, pair by pair, we can uncover the termination panel wiring immediately above the charm holder, and we can remove the wiring that's embedded into that cable tray so that will allow us to unbundle the wires so that we can then begin to move those down um, one pair at a time. Now, when we're down this low in the panel, it's probably useful to remove the actual charm holder from the rack so that it's easier to terminate the wires. As we move up in the panel, it may not actually be necessary to do that. And so we can then go into the first pair of wires, and we're doing all these in order. So we'll take our first pair, noting the plus and minus polarity. We re-terminate those into the charm holder. And once those wires are terminated, we would then insert that charm holder back in to the actual rack. Once the first pair of wires has been terminated, we then can move our second charm holder and we can follow that process likewise, removing the pair of wires and since Provox, from an analog standpoint, utilizes all of the same um, I.O. in a given uh, term panel, um, when we reinsert our charms into this case, we would all have the same charms. However, the panels that allow for different signal conditioning modules um, in a panel, which actually this panel is an isolated panel, um, we can then, of course, insert the appropriate charm for that type uh, into the charm panel to facilitate different signal types in different locations. And so we're going to continue this process for all of the I.O. points that we find in a particular panel. One of the things that you'll note as we move towards the end of this charm rack is that there are 24 positions in two groups of 12 for the maximum number of signals per horizontal row. Because Provox is 16 channels per horizontal row for most signals, 8 for pulse and analog outputs, we will not populate every charm holder with a pair of wires as we move from terminal panel to terminal panel. We may elect to use the remaining channels on the panel to pick up some of those eight channel panels that might be populated in a cabinet, although this cabinet does not have uh, any eight channel panels, or yes it does, it has, uh, has one as we get further to the top, you'll find an eight channel panel up towards the top. We can elect to put a horizontal row of 24 charms and just add the eight channels to it, or we can elect to utilize spare channels at the end of one of the existing panels. That will all be done during upfront engineering and detail design where we will decide how many charm racks that we require within a cabinet.
this completes our first row of wiring, we would then dress our cables back into the appropriate panduit that was installed in place. And at this point, we would then be able to move up to our next row within the panel. Want to take out the termination, the old termination panel? Yep. And then we'll, that'll be our, our time frame. Once all of our cables are are dressed into the panel and our cable cover is reinstalled, we can then move and move the term panel. that has just been replaced This then opens up our next free row that will allow us to put our next charm panel in and to start the process all over of moving our wires from that panel down to the next charm holder. And our, it's two charm carriers for three termination panels. So all we need is another set of charm panels for the next two robots termination panels.